everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Goodman. I uh, chair the uh, board of the uh, Drupal Association. It's nice to welcome you to this uh, to the board meeting. I would observe that attendance is down apparently when we don't feed people lunch at the same time, <laughs> um, and, and and that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, I'm, I'm calling us to order. I can't see the slides. Are we going uh, straight to the minutes approval? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I need, uh, by the way, is Ryan here? Ryan, Ryan. So Ryan had agreed to take minutes for this meeting. Um, yeah, so, so Suzanne is, thank you for stepping in, Suzanne. Yeah. Um, where is Ryan? Okay, he's going to get in trouble. Uh, the, what kind of trouble? I don't know, I've got to figure it out since he's a major sponsor. So. Uh, at any rate, all right, um, uh, I do need a motion to uh, approve the minutes from our last public board meeting, which was on April 10th. I motion that we approve the last board meetings from April 10th. Is there a second? All right, George seconds. Second. Oh, oh, no. George seconded my third. Right, <laughs> George seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, so that was the scintillating part of the board meeting because it's the, I think it's the only vote we take. Uh, I do want to, more importantly, I think, I, I do want to give a couple of uh, updates uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the board retreat uh, that we had this past weekend. This is something that we do uh, twice a year, uh, usually uh, in line with each of the cons here and in, and in the U.S. Uh, uh, first and foremost, um, uh, I know everybody has been great about uh, welcoming Heather as our new executive director. Um, this was, uh, Heather's been with us now about four months. This was actually Heather's first meeting with the board. Uh, <laughs> So um, uh, it was it was it was absolutely absolutely uh, uh, notable for that, and um, I, you know I, I know I speak for my colleagues when you know we just had a great set of new interactions. Um, um, Heather is going to bring I think a fresh perspective um, and uh, and a new sensibility to to the opportunities and potential for the Triple Association, and uh, and where we could be headed. Uh, I think the board is 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 ready to go in that direction and to, you know, sort of think about how do we build from the very strong history and foundation that we have, to you know, sort of where do we want to go next? Um, and we just I, I, we just feel great about uh, about your leadership and and where you're going to take us and some of your thoughts and we know it's not going to be perfect, um, but we know that 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 that. that we want that forward motion. We want that experimentation, and the risk, and the change, and, and the growth. Um, I would characterize our uh, our discussion uh, over the weekend as uh, vigorous and engaged. Sort of the uh, um, and certainly went longer than was in the time budget, uh, but everybody was great about hanging in there. The uh, uh, just a, a few topics in terms of uh, in, in, in terms of what we covered to give people a sense of that. The first is that we did uh, talk, as Dries talked about in, in, in the Dries note, and as, and as Heather and Michael Lamb talked about, we talked about the uh, Community Recognition uh, Committee and basically uh, went from idea to how do we want to operationalize it in terms of you know, giving a charge to that committee. Um, and uh, we asked uh, Michael Lamb, who was stepping off of the board, um, to chair that, uh, to chair that committee for us, um, I, th I think he's going to do a great job. Um, they're going to come back to us with you know their thoughts and recommendations. Um, certainly, our hope is that we have uh, something that we can uh, that, that that we can share and help fine tune with people when we all meet in Minneapolis. So the so we've given them, I think, an ambitious uh, set of between now and Minneapolis. Um, I would characterize it as, you know, this is really about the health and sustainability of the project and the DA and that that's, you know, where we want them to be focused. Um, the, the board certainly as a part of the charter wants whatever that uh, CRC, you know, output is to be fair, easy, and simple. We want it to have really clear benefits for people who are contributing uh, to the community, who are contributing to Drupal, 
and obviously as in terms of helping to sustain the Drupal Association as well. Um, so the, the, there needs to be benefits all, all the way all the way around. Um, just uh, uh, a few other thoughts from the retreat. Um, we did agree uh, to uh, to have a, 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 a deeper conversation, and I think just part of it is about Heather's arrival as well, and really doing a review of our strategy and where we want to go next, and having a, a, a much more in-depth conversation about that. We're going to work on dates um, for getting together to have that conversation. We also talked about, not surprisingly unrelated to the strategy, um, reorganizing some of the committees and um, board members you should now have in uh, an email asking you to indicate which committees you might be most interested in. Right? So, so, right, so I'm going to take a poll to see who's responded already. Yeah, you guys get gold stars. You get extra time a professor. You get extra credit for your grade. So that's good. Um, the, um, uh, and we also talked a little about the importance of uh, reaching outside of the Drupal community. Um, obviously, we don't believe that the work inside of the Drupal community is done. There's always more that we could do, but we have a voice and, and we really want to make sure that we're using that voice as part of the association to talk about, uh, to talk about what's going on. By the way, on the, when I talked about the community recognition um, committee, um, I, don't, I, I verbally didn't point out there is a link um, for how you can learn more and how you can identify if this is something that you would like, a process that you would like to participate in. Uh, we obviously are going to put together the committee um, from the people who uh, nominate themselves or uh, who are nominated by others, and uh, that's, that, that's key to this process. Um, lastly, uh, there are a, a, a number of uh, welcomes and uh, thank yous. Let me do the welcomes first if I have it in the right order. Uh, we go where you go. All right. <laughs> it's good to be the chair. All right. Um, <laughs> So I want to start uh, uh, by welcoming our newest members. Uh, first is uh, Grace Francisco, um, and um, uh, and you can read a little bit more uh, about Grace. Um, we also we have uh, we have four and a half new board members. I'll get to the half in just a second. Um, I also want to welcome uh, Leslie Glenn, uh, who is here. Uh, Leslie is one of our two community elected board members, and uh, many of you remember, may remember Leslie from uh, the just extraordinary recognition for extraordinary service um, that she received uh, in terms of earning, earning the Aaron Wynn Board Award last year. So, um, and so, uh, and I, you know, we were just, I was just so thrilled that, that the community saw fit to, to appoint you. This is, we're really excited to have you. Um, the, uh, now I've lost track of my order, who's after, uh, Lo Lee, um, was with us this weekend, uh, but was not able to, uh, uh, to stay for the con, and again, her background is up there, um, uh, I, th I think, uh, she's going to be, uh, really bring us, uh, a, 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 along with Grace, just really some additional outside perspective, um, and that's one of the balance points that we absolutely want to have on the board, um. Switching to some folks with uh, sort of more of an internal perspective is uh, Owen Lansbury. Um, so Owen's over here. Um, and as, as you all know, um, uh, Owen and his team have been just uh, huge contributors to the project over the years. Uh, he also brings uh, uh, a, a, a voice from a different continent. Um, and we speak the same language sometimes. Uh, it's all about the accent. Am I in diversity now? Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so uh, we want to we want to welcome Owen, and sort of the um, half, partly because he's not here, so I'm giving him a brief. <laughs> and, uh, is uh, Ryan, who was the um, uh, Ryan, who, who was the uh, uh, community elected board member. Uh, it's not sort of an automatic or you know even typical thing, but. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, and, and, and I think everybody knows Ryan, again, just the extraordinary contributions that he, he and his firm has made to Drupal over the years. It just kind of made sense, I think, as a part of that voice to have him continue on the board, but shift from being a community elected person to, um, uh, 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 to a board appointed person. So those are the welcomes. There are three uh, really important thank yous. This is, and I think the 
we certainly sat here over the weekend, and I think we all feel it as, as a part of the board. Uh, in addition to Heather's arrival and the arrival of the new board members, this really is a transition point for us as a board in, in, in a very positive way. Again, solid foundation to, to where we're headed. Uh, and uh, three people are, are stepping off of the board uh, after just extraordinary uh, service. Um, the, uh, uh, the first is uh, Mike Lamb. Uh, many of you, again, know Mike. Uh, he's with uh, Pfizer and, again, is going to be joining. So we didn't let him go exactly. Yes, he's off the board, <laughs> but he's chairing this very important committee for us, was our, uh, uh, was our board secretary uh, for many years, and uh, just was a uh, calm, cool, and collected, and you know, broad-thinking presence. Um, and I will certainly miss seeing him in, in, in the room. Um, Annie Miller led our uh, nominating committee. Um, and um, it's, it's one of those things that um, takes an, ex it's one of parts of the, of the process take an extraordinary amount of time and thoughtfulness and board nominations is one of those. We have a good problem in that there are a lot of people who would like to be on our board and, um, and thinking about sort of the current composition and where we want the board to go and how we bring in those outside voices. Um, and how we continue to uh, raise uh, the profile of the people who we're appointing and, and all of those things. It just takes a lot of thoughtfulness and a lot of time and frankly a lot of meeting with people. Uh, and uh, Annie contributed that. Um, the other thing that she really did was, uh, right when she came on the board, was a sort of voice of the customer exercise for us. Um, which again uh, gave us some new input and some new data in terms of thinking about who have we historically been listening to and who are we not listening to and how do we how do we hear those new voices and I want to thank Annie for that um, and uh, and and last is um, is Jacob Redding so uh, uh, Jacob um, many of you know uh, was a volunteer with Drupal beginning in, in, I think it was 1898. <laughs> uh, and then about 1906 or 1907 uh, was, on the, was on the staff uh, of the Drupal Association. Then we, uh, 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 then he wisely went away for a few years and we even more wisely brought him back. Uh, as a board member, and uh, so when we think about sort of uh, massive uh, transitions, uh, certainly Jacob stepping off the board is is one of those is one of those pieces. Um, he was our uh, treasurer, uh, certainly for my tenure. I'm not sure if we, it was after Tiffany, right? You picked it up from Tiffany Harris. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> and uh, those of you, those of you who know me know that. Um, uh, financial acumen is not my strength area and never will be. Um, so, uh, I, uh, so I called Jacob and said, um, it'd be great if you could be the treasurer. You need to know that I operate on a very simple green, green yellow, red light system. Um, and uh, if, if you could just keep an, uh, an eye on that. And we were still uh, digging out and trying to improve the financial condition. And, and uh, Jacob, your work and the work of that committee, um, um, you know, with Batty and others, has really got us to, you know, the much healthier position that we're in today. And I know that's just your recent contribution, but I really want to call that out because it's, again, from a foundation perspective, has set us up very nicely to where we want to go next. So that's my updates. I'm now going to turn it over to Heather. I just want to say thank you, Jacob. And Heather, the floor is yours. So Jacob, when I got to make a, a brief stop at Seattle DrupalCon as part of the executive search process, gave me the insider's tour of Seattle. Uh, and so we spent what I think was a couple hours walking around Seattle and, and, and getting the lay of the land. And so it was a combo learn everything about Drupal that's in his head, which I think would take two years, um, but also just you made it a very a very fun welcome into the Drupal community for me, along with everyone else on the board. So thank you, and Jacob, you'll be much missed. Okay, so what are we up to and what am I thinking? So this is the one-slide version of that. Um, 
hopefully what we've got our eye on in, in the coming year is not too dissimilar from what's important to you as well. We do try to align those things, but some of this will resonate what Adam already talked about, and some of these things are, are what we're working on internally at the DA team. Um, one of the things I heard very clearly coming in is that we do a very good job speaking to each other in the channels where we already exist and where there's a huge need is for the rest of the world to know about Drupal and to embrace Drupal and to see it as an important part of technology. So we're really thinking through where should we be, where we can have that voice, show thought leadership, um, and help everyone else know the magic of Drupal that we know. So that's a huge focus area from us. It's gonna be heavily leaning on the marketing side. So we have hired a new marketing director. Uh, she came in a couple months ago and a lot of what that vision is is setting up a strategic plan around how we make that happen. So you'll be hearing a lot more of that in the coming months. Really focusing on relationship building, in particular with our supporting partners and, and our key stakeholders. Had a great supporting partner session yesterday. And what really came up, and some of you were in there, um, is you know we really have a need to align closely um, with a lot of communities, but that end user community is one of them. So how do we support our supporting partners, right? Many of whom are agencies, and, and that's a key focus area for us. And we came up with some good things out of our session yesterday that we're gonna put into action. But I think it's even, even more aligning the people that drive Drupal and the Drupal Association and how we can better work together so that we're all meeting those goals. Adam already spoke to this, but what was on our list from the, from the very beginning was you know, those mechanisms to recognize and reward volunteers. And so while there will be the mechanical component of capturing contributions, there's also a marketing and communications component of highlighting those that work within the project. So what's really important to me is that we're making very visible whether it is through social media or blogs or however we can do it, <coughs> highlight those of you, the people behind Drupal and the power of it. So individuals, companies, anything we can do to better showcase all of you. Another session we had yesterday was around local associations and um, they have a huge need as they are growing uh, to be able to look at scaling, recruiting volunteers and how all of that can, can align with the Drupal Association. So we're working on what the structures look like for us to be able to provide uh, from a kind of a shared services model, the things that are, there are things that are critical for local associations and events to do, and there's administration, right? And where we wanna put the power of volunteers are in the things that we're not on the ground to be able to do. So what we're working together to do is make sure that we let you do what you do best, and then we better find where we can support from the DA angle. Membership. So thank you to everyone. Raise your hand if your member sticker is on. Yes, yay. Okay. Dries needs a sticker just for the record. <laughs> Dries. <laughs> so you may have noticed um, some increased activity at our DA booth here at DrupalCon Europe where we're really pushing the power of DA membership. And so we're committed not only to bringing you into the membership family, but also creating meaningful membership programs, right? So right now, um, it is, thank you for being a member, you're funding our work. We also wanna find out what are meaningful benefits that we can bring to you as members and layer those into your membership program as individuals and as organizations. So that's another big initiative that we're working on this year into next year. I already talked a little bit about local camps and associations. It really is looking at how do we lay the groundwork so all of that happens a little bit easier. And then we, we launched the diversity and inclusion conversation heavily in Seattle. We, we continue to look at that and, and fold it into what we do. But what we don't have at the DA that we're working on now is a real strategic plan behind what that means. So where are those focus areas? What are the focus areas within diversity and inclusion that are meaningful from a Drupal perspective? And how do we start to not only talk about it more and recognize it more, but actually start to move the needle? So I'd be remiss if I don't take every opportunity under the sun to recognize my team, uh, some of whom are here. <laughs> so uh, Tim, Ryan, and Neil were brave enough to join us today. I think everyone else has been put to work at our booth, <laughs> which is why they're not here today. But this, this is a, a really special team of people that are putting all this together. 
And when you have that moment of why can't they do the 18,000 things on the list and why are they only doing the 100, just keep this number in mind and understand that we, we're working to scale as well. We are, uh, we're walking the walk when it comes to getting outside of the Drupal bubble to an, at least outside of our DA bubble. So I got to attend my first Drupal camp a, a few months ago at Drupal Camp Atlanta. And so we're also committed to how can we get to spend more time with you from a local perspective and not just at DrupalCon. So if you've got a local event happening, make sure it's on DrupalCal.com so that we know it. And if there's something special happening, you need some special content from us or anything like that, reach out and let us know. Outside the Drupal bubble, Tim and I uh, were attended by invitation to the Google CMS Leadership Summit. Google did pay for us to attend, so thank you, Google. Um, so we got to spend some time with CMS leaders in general, but I think the most meaningful conversation we had, and, and, and Tim may agree, is we got to have an open source roundtable with our peers. And what was probably not, was surprising and not surprising at the same time is when we talked about what are our biggest issues, they're all the same in general, right? So we're all facing the same challenges. What was clear to me is I need to do a good job of connecting and collaborating with my peers in open source so that we can better learn from each other. So they see Drupal as a leader in many, many ways. So there was a lot of pride in the room when Tim and I were there because we got to talk about what we do great. But there are things we can all learn from and this contribution recognition piece is huge. So I think what will likely happen is the next time we land at the summit, once we've run through the initiative that we're talking about, is open source is going to be looking at us to be a leader in this. And when we talk about opportunities for thought leadership, I think this is one of those we should take advantage of. Uh, we've also gone to some other events. One in particular was a Portland Partners in Diversity event. So we're also trying to go to non-technology events where Drupal can be part of the conversation. You'll see some of the people in the room that are also at this table, so Midwest Drupal Summit. Uh, we also had a presence at Drupal GovCon, and we actually hosted a smaller version of our executive summit at that event. So that was another way for us to not only connect with developers and marketers, but also to connect with those end user executives that, that I know everybody's interested in, in getting hold of. Speaking of membership, uh, hopefully on social media you saw our membership campaign. This is going to be an ongoing campaign, so if you'd like to participate, you can reach out to us and we'll feature you on social media. Um, you can see some of, the, some of the summaries of things where people said, I'm a Drupal, uh, Drupal member because. Uh, so we are, we are thrilled about our community. We want to highlight you more, and this is just one way we can do that. So I mentioned the Drupal Executive Summit we did at, at GovCon. We've actually um, have done three so far. We're doing a fourth in Minneapolis. So if this is something that's interesting to you, please reach out. This is a way we're reaching into CTO, CIO, CMO uh, audiences as well. I mentioned it uh, pre Dree's note, but one thing that was really exciting was launching the official charter for the event organizers working group. I think this is going to do a lot for us in organizing local events so that we are sharing best practices, learning from each other, not recreating the wheel because there are great things happening across the globe when it comes to local events and we need to make sure we talk to each other and share all of that great expertise. These are the camps that were represented on the organizers working group and wanted to highlight that there was global participation so that we had various input. So DrupalCon Amsterdam, we are here. So this is just a quick overview of who's attending DrupalCon Amsterdam. The last number I heard was just under 1,500 people. So that is, that's good turnout uh, for resurrecting DrupalCon Europe. As you can see, these are the uh, top 10 countries represented. Find yours, brag accordingly. Um, and then you can, you can look at you, yes, Germany and Netherlands are up there. <laughs> but it's nice, and you know, and it's definitely important that we have a presence in Europe, and thank you, Europe, for giving us a little bit of time to figure it out, um, and we're thrilled to have been able to implement this new version. I'm wondering why Belgium is not at the top of the list, Therese. Could you comment on that? <laughs> letting me down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the snippet on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny that you say it's 
because we had for many years, I would say Belgium was ahead of the Netherlands, and it was always kind of like you know yep. a, uh, a fun. Yeah. Wait, wait, this for population, and we win. <laughs> that is true. You can massage the data and make it work. So, because it is a new format, and we're all learning things uh, in conjunction with our event partnership with Quoni, um, wanted to make sure one that you were able to give feedback on individual sessions, which you can do through the app. Uh, there is a debrief boff this afternoon here at DrupalCon, so that you can have some live discussion around your feedback. And if you're not able to make it to that event, you can uh, participate in our online survey. We would very much like to get your feedback. We're taking our notes. We need your notes so that we can get this even better for next time. And I know we have not officially announced a session yet, but we are feverishly working toward being able to do that. And we're committed to making this work in DrupalCon Europe again. So we do have, um, if you don't want to wait a year to come hang out with us, you can visit us at DrupalCon in Minneapolis. Just a quick, quick look at what the uh, week of events looks like. It is a full five days, uh, with that fifth day being the contribution opportunities. One thing I wanted to point out, so what we always, you know, we always try to learn lessons and, and make every DrupalCon better. And one thing that we're doing in Minneapolis is increasing our community involvement. So. We opened up the training uh, call for proposals as an open call instead of invitation only, which it has been in the past. So that's giving a, a, a nice diverse pool of training sessions. Um, our program committee has, tradi has traditionally been about 20 people. And this year, we very purposely reached out in the community, and it's around 70 members of the community that are participating in the, in the program committee for Minneapolis, which I think is, is just a great improvement. Um, and that's going to lead to even better thought leadership and even more perspectives on what that content looks like. And if you are thinking to yourself right now, gee, I really want to be involved because that looks fun, you can. So, uh, we have a link here. Uh, if you don't have a chance to take a picture to use later, you can find us at the DA booth, but we will, we will find ways to get you involved. We still need speaker and session team members. Um, we still need leaders for various tracks. And, of course, we need speakers. So, speakers, uh, speaker call for proposals is still open, so there's still an opportunity for you to get your content in as well. When does that close? December. December 10th. 10th. So we hope to see some of you in Minneapolis. And at this time, I'd like to uh, bring Tim to the stage yeah. to talk about Drupal.org. Yeah, so as, uh, as you all know, a, a large part of the mission of the Drupal Association, of course, is uniting the community to uh, build, promote, and secure Drupal. So on that build note, um, our small but mighty team of engineers uh, focuses on creating all those tools that let um, you here build Drupal itself. So I just want to talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing and the work, the work that we do in general. Um, one of the just things I'd like to highlight really quickly, and you may have seen this slide briefly go by in the preamble to the Dries note as well, is that Drupal.org is increasingly part of the um, service infrastructure that supports Drupal as a product. Um, so, uh, it, you know, many years ago, 10 years ago, Drupal was something that you could sort of use by itself. Um, it wasn't dependent on kind of web-driven services. But now, uh, every year, a new bubble goes up on this list of something that Drupal.org provides that is a direct integration back to the product, whether it was updates at the beginning, things like security advisories, the composer endpoint, the localization services. And we expect more year over year, um, and Drupal.org will continue to be sort of an essential part of Drupal um, as the software, not just as a support infrastructure. And I think that's something we'd love for everybody to, to keep in mind and, and help collaborate with us on as we work to make uh, Drupal even better going forward. Good comments. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, that. So, so uh, you know, as we're in my project, we have, um, I will say that the collaboration between the Drupal project and the core committers and the Drupal association staff is at an all-time high. Like, it's never been this good. Like yeah. all the things you mentioned, they're happening, we're seeing, we're getting the support from the Drupal Association to make things better. Um, you mentioned all of the initiatives, but it's obviously a big thank you and huge credit to you, Tim, and Ryan, and Neil, who's kind of hiding there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least for me, um, and I'm sure other people as well, but thanks for all the hard work. It's been, it's been night and day, actually, compared to just a couple of years ago. So.
awesome. And so another of the, the initiatives that I think everybody was hopefully thrilled to see during the during the Dries Note. When and they finally this, saw it. Uh, yeah, once the, <laughs> once the video began playing was this collaboration with the European Commission to work on this automatic updates initiative. And that's an example of those services where uh, the process of packaging uh, the update packages, assigning them securely, delivering them to Drupal sites is all infrastructure that takes place on Drupal.org and becomes an essential part of making Drupal easier to use, easier to maintain, lowering that cost of ownership. Um, so this initiative was kind of a, a, a dual experiment um, and a successful one on two fronts in that it's a new way for us to collaborate and support uh, Drupal as software, but it was also a new and very significant collaboration with the European Commission um, as you know, a large governmental organization here in Europe recognizing the value of Drupal um, and you know they use it internally on almost all of the uh, EU sites and properties right it's it's important to them but the fact that we've been able to reach out and get them involved and have them become good citizens and participants in our community is tremendous and we want to look for those opportunities in other places to multiply the impact that our small team can have um, on the Drupal project so we are seeking more sponsors for more phases of that initiative, so I'm going to give that shout out again because I'd love to get more people involved from more organizations, whether you're supporting partners, whether you're end users, whether you have connections to other government organizations that are heavily reliant on Drupal, hint, hint, Australian government, um, and maybe you want to have uh, some participation uh, in, in this. Um, so those are just some, some quick updates. I think um, we can move to sort of a Q&A session. We've got about... 15, 14 minutes for questions for the board at large or for us as the engineering team. And you can line up at the microphone, please, so that um, uh, we can get everything on the recording. Alternately, we can pass it around if the board members have any comments they'd like to add. Do it, do it. <laughs> Ray first. <laughs> so, so where's the, the big blue group leak on? <laughs> yeah, no, the inflatable has a puncture, I'm afraid. <laughs> but we'll certainly get get that arranged. Tim, at the last Drupal kind you talked about pull requests. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, so I should talk about that a little bit more. So Neil has been working quite a bit on um, the next sort of element of GitLab integration and sort of prototyping what it's going to take to turn that on. Um, we're hoping to do that actually very soon. Um, so we were uh, we had some dependencies on the GitLab team itself that I've mentioned at previous events. Um, I probably shouldn't get too technical, but they did full clones of every repository every time you made a fork. That meant that if we had a fork open for every core issue, it would be 200 terabytes of disk space just for core. So we needed them to fix that and do object deduplication, and they released that in their 12.0.0 release just, just a month or two ago. Um, so since then, we've been getting that ready, and right now we're just in the process of integrating it into the UI. So uh, Neil has a, a development site that we're working on that actually has the full, here's a button to create the fork, um, and you can kind of see that. So we're going to put that together and then probably pass it around a bit for UX review to make sure that that's going to work well for everybody's workflow. should be coming soon. Next six months? Uh, I hope less, yeah. Can I highlight something really quick on that? Can you grab the mic? So, for those people who don't know, I work for Accenture, I'll be really quick. We have 500,000 employees worldwide, very big organization. And recently I was talking with our head of DevOps, uh, who is working on certain things. And no joke, in like a big Slack channel that we have, he was asking other sort of leaders, like, does anybody know of a large migration to GitLab with something like maybe 10,000 branches or so? And he's like, not yeah. <laughs> so we, we need some examples for like our enterprise clients, but uh, we're way beyond that. <laughs> yeah, forty thousand so, projects, let alone yeah. branches. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing things way above what the company is doing. Yeah. So, more questions for the board, or perhaps for me. <laughs> so I know that uh, one of the reasons. Uh, we left uh, Europe for a year was really a financial decision. Um, I'm super interested in knowing how this shift to using a, a, the vendor that we're using um, has affected that bottom line. Yeah. Okay. So the good news is 
the way that we structured the partnership is dramatically different than what we've ever done before and quite frankly different than we do in North America. So the, the, the upside is there was, we did not own the financial risk of the expense side of running the event. So it's more structured like a license agreement. Um, what that does is allow us to do the things we do well, the community pieces get everybody together, but it doesn't have such an impact on our financials that we had to not do it. Um, so Adam, I don't know if you want to say anything else about it, but it, the reason that we're committed to getting your feedback and getting this just right from a partnership perspective is not only does it allow us to keep coming back to Europe and not have the financial risk, the idea ultimately is that we scale. So there are other parts of the world we need to be in, and this is the only partnership construct that will allow us to do that effectively. That's, yeah, that, that, that was what I was going to add is, you know, our hope is that this experiment turns into something that we can scale to other geographies around the world and figure out how to make, how, how to make work. Um, I, I think we're all aware, as a, certainly as, as a board, we want to be more present in more places, and uh, in, a, in, a, in an in-person way, not just in a virtual way. Uh, and because we know that we need the two to really have a very healthy community. So, you know, this is, it was a, yes, we need to figure out how to do this right. And part of doing it right, to your point, is how do we scale it in a way that we can do over and over again, not just in the same geography, but in different geographies. And, and part of that is we know that different, you know, that. What a conference would look like here is obviously going to be different than what a conference would look like in India, for example. And we want to be able to account for that as well. So it's not just let's figure out a cookie cutter. It's let's figure out a model that works, but still allow for the authenticity and the flexibility of the community and the voice and that, and, you know, for whatever, whoever that conference would attract. For what it's worth, I think that this experiment worked pretty well. That's great feedback. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just to speak on the global scaling piece, one of the reasons that Quoni ended up being the partner of choice is that they have a global presence, global presence with local teams. So all of all of these places that we want to go, they have the ability already built into their system to accommodate that. So we're not taking a local team and trying to grow at the same time. We've got we've got somebody who's got that structure in place. Um, are there any, uh, can you talk a little bit more about your plans to collaborate with other open source projects um, to communicate the value of open source? So I, I don't know that it's anything specific right now other than we need to do it, um, is about as far as the plan has gotten, but I think part of that means while it's important to have me at Drupal events, it's just as important to have me in non-Drupal events. And we need to make sure that, that is, that's in the schedule and in the planning and in the budget. And, and when I think about it, um, I, we think about how do we scale that effort. So it's not just does the staff need to be places, but we even talked about board as Drupal leaders being in other places, um, ambassadors of the Drupal community being in other places so that we can truly scale that effort. Um, so we're building out the plan of kind of what that looks like and where are their strategic collaborations. But some of that we won't know until we get there and have conversations and see who wants to who wants to come hang out with us too. Um, but I think the first step is we've got to go and we've got to meet them and we've got to have the conversations. And I think it's everything from your typical open source communities to, we had a conversation yesterday with Facebook open source, right? So we've got to be thinking about all the different ways that we work together. And in almost every conversation, there is something that we have in common that we want to collaborate on. So, so far, so far it's been a good experiment. Um, we just need the time and bandwidth and scaling mechanism to do more of it. So if you're interested in being part of this <laughs> Drupal community that helps us get out and about and, and evangelize Drupal in some non-traditional areas, please let me know. Yeah, easily, our, our biggest constraint is not on anything that we do, whether it's inside or outside of the community, is frankly, frankly just time and financial resources. And our, our, we have just enough funding to do exactly what we are doing right now. So any new activity that we take on, and there's a long list of things that we as a board really want to be able to do, we have to figure out sort of in a nice way how we're going to pay for it in terms of you know the, the staff or volunteers and, and helping those volunteers stay organized or other financial commitments that are required in order to in order to make that happen and um, I, I, as I think about Drupal 
we've got big ambitions, we've got big goals, and we want to do it all. We, we really do. We've just got to figure out how do we how do how do we support it in a way that is sustainable. Emory and George are fighting over the chance to go to the mic. <clears throat> I was surprised by the pricing for Minneapolis uh, tickets. Um, I know we've done some experiments in the last few years, and as a long-time Drupal con attendee, you know that pays his own way because I'm an independent contractor. The pricing now is egregious. I, I wondered if you could, you know, I had an email exchange with hoping that you can consider ways to make it more affordable for people that aren't being sponsored, aren't being paid by big corporations. We've gone from three days to two days, or four days to three days, however you calculate it. So the price per day has gone up quite a bit. So, Can you speak to it, or we did a we did a pricing study um, a couple of years ago, and looked at, um, uh, and I don't have the specifics off the top of my head, but um, you know what we looked at was basically where are our peers at and where are we at kind of thing. And to, to say that we were below the mean would be an understatement. Um, and I know when we changed pricing, we I'm not even sure we hit the mean, but I could be wrong. Got closer. Yeah, we got closer to it. And the, and the other piece of this, and I'm sensitive to your comment, is, um, um, is we do have a scholarship program because we don't want it, we still want to obviously be open and accessible and create opportunity, but we also wanted to recognize, frankly, the reality that, and I, and I appreciate what you, what you said, so I want to be clear about that, but we also know the vast majority of our attendees are people who are sponsored by, you know, a company or, or an organization that has the resources. And I, and I really want to tie this back to my previous comment, um, which is, we are committed to being open, we are committed to being diverse, we are committed to offering more benefits and more opportunities for people who participate in the Drupal community, and all of that takes resources. Um, and um, uh, that's important. We've got to find a way, to, and it's not sort of how do we max, we don't sit in a room and think, how can we squeeze every penny out of somebody so we can get the money? <laughs> That's not what the conversation is about, and I want to be and I want to be very clear about that. We really are trying to think about how do how do how do we how can we do the things that we as a community know we want to be able to do, um, and, um, um, and and to help grow and sustain Drupal. There are you know again people point to us as Heather said with you know wow it's incredible that you guys are doing this 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 and this. And at the same time, as people inside the community, we think to ourselves, yeah, but we still want to do this, 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 and this. Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, the scholarships are really good. Like, this are, that's a super, super, super program to have available, but, I'm oh, sorry. Um, the scholarships are, are, are terrific and a really super way to, uh, to get folks who are, um, uh, you know, less, less able to, to attend the events to be able to attend the events. I would imagine, though, um, and I'm going to pick on Doug here for a second. Um, fella who's uh, at his point in his career um, probably would say, "I'm not going to. I'm not going to apply for a scholarship. There's somebody else who needs it way more than I do." And I totally hear what he's saying is being an independent contractor and it's still being really expensive. Sure. And, it, and um, so I'm going to put on. I, I know I want to have a long dialogue on this, but I'm going to put on my I'm a professor hat for just a moment. Yeah. Because this is something that we absolutely see in higher ed, where People will say, there's somebody more deserving than me, so I'm not going to even bother applying. That's where the mistake happens. And in the nicest possible way, that's not that student's or your decision. And it, uh, you never know, apply. Ask. The worst thing that happens is you get you know, a no, and I think we can figure out, we'd rather have you be there and figure out how to make that happen. Can I add to this? So as a, as a board member, so the discussion has been a lot about contribution credits. As an example, and the DEA today gives the sponsored uh, so partners 10% discount if you are a partner of the Drupal Association of the prizes. And I think that we have an opportunity, especially in this case, and what you're mentioning, to actually use a contribution system if that yeah. would be reflecting on the contributions. 
to actually do some kind of a, a discount system out of it. Just saying that as a board member that I think that that should be something that yeah. we should be looking at. So I would love to see that maybe happening. Well, and I think that feeds into what, what I mentioned with looking at membership, not just organizationally, but individual. Those are the things that we're trying to tackle. Yeah. Um, so I've been collaborating with, uh, with the last Drupal Council bit on the program, and I feel like um, we are making good progress, especially also with the, the collaboration with Kuoni. But like every year I have the feeling like we are starting from scratch again, so um, somehow all the knowledge gets lost and all the good uh, learnings that we have kind of drop and then we start like really late and then we kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if, if it's maybe the, the kind of collaboration tools that are a bit dated. I see a lot of good progress being made on Drupal.org, but overall I'm not, I'm not yet convinced if we really solve all of our collaboration problems fast enough to be co like, uh, like effectively collaborating as the community that we're growing. Yeah, I, th I think a particular area of collaboration tools that needs more attention. We have a lot of good tools for individual issue collaboration, documentation collaboration. We lack a lot around the formal tooling for initiative collaboration. There's sort of like landing pages for it and then people set up their Slack channels and things like that. But that's, that's those are the kinds of like project management oriented things that we're still missing and that could apply to cons, to volunteer opportunities, but also to the software. Yep, so I want to add to this, so Joseph, thank you so much for being part of the advisory board, and I, and I feel it because Imre and, and you and, and we were doing this. So one of the things that I want to actually say and give compliments to the DA staff, because uh, you actually stepped in uh, really well in the last months to help us to get things done. And there were also like, there were issues like recording that was not part of the, the original deal with Kooni, and, and we just somehow missed that. And um, so what happened there is that the German Drupal Association, they came and said, Let's, so we are going to take care of the live streaming. So they sent a person here from the leftover from the budget from last year to come and do the live streaming of Driesnot. And also Pantheon uh, sent Kenneth Dull here to actually do all of the recording that we are having here. So also like we should thank them for, for stepping up and actually taking care of that. But you're totally right. We should have figured this out many months ago and solved it uh, earlier and not be in last minute there. So let's maybe do a, I would say that we should do a retrospective of this together with the DA maybe after two weeks, not tomorrow. So with that, we are a little bit over our time, so we will wrap it up. Adam, I'll let you officially close out the meeting. Yeah, thank you all for, for coming. Um, do we do a motion to adjourn? Does anybody remember? Sure. We're going to do a motion to adjourn just in case we need to. So is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Actually, I have a question. Did, oh. we, did we approve the meeting minutes? Or did yes. yes, we did. Yes. Okay. If you show up on time, you know all oh, of the right. things, Jesse. No, I heard of it. <laughs> Right. It was just a long time ago. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you.